we'll see if the floodgates open. Gerson to the goal! Yes, sir! Shane Gerson makes it two! Hello and welcome to North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. I'm Alex Seinert. Well, after back-to-back -back road series, UND hoped a return to the friendly confines of Ralph Engelstad Arena would help the reigning national champs get back to their winning ways. Standing in their way, though, one of their oldest rivals, the pioneers of Denver. I consider Denver one of our biggest rivalries. It's a 60-minute battle every time we play them. Coming into this building, you know, it's, it's packed before warm-ups. Uh, you know, sold out, the, the fans are screaming. It's always a, a fast game. It's always uh, an intense game. It's the biggest rivalry that we have as a program, and I would agree that North Dakota would say the same thing. When you come in as a freshman, all the older guys tell you, oh, Denver, we got Denver this weekend, it's gonna be a tough matchup, you know. We pride ourselves on beating Denver, so. You know, you're just kind of born into it when you when you come into uh, North Dakota as a freshman. It's definitely just something that's passed down through you know the different years. The seniors pass it down, the juniors and stuff like that. Their experiences and normally the experiences are pretty. I guess you could say heated because we know each other. The teams know each other. We're always in big time games against each other, and I think that's what it's all about. Each program has so much history, and we, we've played each other so many times in, in conference. Like I said, WCHA. Um, back then in NCHC now, that it just, it, it builds up, you know, for a special, special series. And now Gwazdecki coming onto the ice! Look at this! I've never seen this! Unbelievable! Just some of the memories, you know, like Gwazdecki on, standing on the bench, walking across the ice, things like that, or just, just add to that, that richness of, of the rivalry. Denver's such a well-coached team and uh, the guys in their team play a respectful game and they play hard just as just as we do. We respect them, they respect us. Like I got a couple of buddies that play on North Dakota. One guy, the captain of their team, is my good buddy that played juniors, Gage Osmus. So I mean, we've been texting back and forth and talking about um, just the games coming up. Every time we play them, I really want to win just uh, that little bit more just so I can have that uh, bragging right over them. Last year was so uh, perfect just because um, I think both programs had seven national championships. Winning that series and going on to win the national championship was, uh, you know, I think it was huge bragging rights for, for the students in our school and the fans of UND and obviously the players too, just to uh, you know get that eighth one and separate ourselves from, uh, from them a little bit. That was a tough loss uh, for a lot of guys. I mean, we were. We were rolling, you know, and we felt like we were playing our best hockey, and you know, to come up just short like that was, it was tough. And so I think a lot of guys still have that in the, the back of their mind a little bit. Coming in last year, just losing one game close to the national championship, and to our rivals too, it's uh, kind of puts things into perspective for you, and just kind of shows how great of a rivalry uh, the two programs have with each other. Being able to pull that one on the last minute just shows the intensity of the rivalry with the last minute kind of goal there. So. It's going to be a war again, and uh, that's what we're looking forward to. It makes it so much more fun when, it's, when uh, the crowd's into it, the, the guys, the coaches are into it. Uh, you know, there's, it just feels like there's more on the line. We're always going to get their best game. You know, every time we play these guys, it's going to be a battle. I'm really excited. These games are always a lot of fun, especially when they're coming here in front of our fans and everything. It's going to be a blast. It's a big rivalry game, and uh, everybody here knows that, and so do the fans, so it's, it's a fun weekend. It's always fun when uh, Denver comes to town. Well, as you can tell from that piece, certainly a lot of mutual respect between these two programs, but that did not take the sting out of this series by any stretch. We're going to recap the weekend with the head coach of UND men's hockey, Brad Berry, when we come back. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota.
Welcome back. We're joined now as always by the head coach of UND men's hockey, Brad Berry. And Brad, your team coming off an emotional rivalry weekend. The week before against Minnesota, you get another big rival this coming week against them. Yeah, you know what? It's another storied uh, rival. Uh, a lot of history that goes back a long way. And uh, obviously coming off last year's Frozen Four, uh, playing against them, uh, it's nice to get back at them again. Yeah, how much do you lean on the leadership group just to help the younger guys balance out those emotions going from one big rival to the next? Yeah, good question. Yeah, a lot. Uh, you know, obviously with uh, 19 underclass, uh, and not a lot of familiarity with uh, playing teams like Minnesota and Denver. So uh, the older guys have to translate what's been done. And uh, again, they do a good job at doing that. Yeah, you mentioned you got the last word in the Frozen Four in this rivalry last season as we go to the highlights from Friday night, looking to get off on a good start in the 2016-17 season. First home game for you since October 22nd. And you would not waste any time asserting yourself in this one. A great flurry of chances right off the bat. Yeah, you know what? We got the puck in deep and uh, obviously uh, made a great play to the net. and. Uh, it's very important to get off the great start, great start in, the, in the series. Yeah, this all coming within the first couple of minutes. The puck down in the attacking end for you. A couple of good chances. First from Tucker Pullman. That one from Rhett Gardner. Great look here as Chris Rilke fires the puck in. Ludwig Hoff directing it off the pipe and near goal. In the yeah, not getting a bounce. Doing the right things, not getting a the bounce there. And again, uh, making a great play to the net and uh, went off the bar. And hopefully that goes in. A couple of minutes later, another good chance. Dixon Bowen eventually gets the puck here just to the right of Tanner Gillette, but the goalkeeper makes the save. Just time and time again, it felt like you just controlled the pace of play at the beginning of this contest. Even on the power play here, another great opportunity and a great <laughs> diving save by the defenseman sliding over. Yeah, again, another uh, uh, puck that went to the net. They got a pad on it and an unfortunate bounce off his leg there. But uh, again, doing the right things, and that's so important when you're starting a series on a Friday night. Eight shots to one for you in the opening five minutes. Denver, though, would start to assert themselves as the game moved on. A great save there on a 2 one one from Cam. Yeah, we got uh, outnumbered to the net here, and uh, Cam came over and made a great save reaction save there and he had to do that a couple times. Right at the tail end of the first, another big chance for the Pioneers. Troy Terry with an interception at center ice. Gage Osmus though slides over the big check to prevent the goal scoring opportunity. Yeah, turned the puck over in the neutral zone. Gage uh, came over and made a great play on a, on a very good player there. So uh, again, very fortunate to get out of there. Things had balanced out there after those 20 minutes. He still led 10 to 8 in shots after one. Denver, though, again, with Powell and the pressure in the second, a good chance there by Emil Romick, another big save by Cam. Yeah, you know, uh, Cam, uh, Cam didn't get called upon too often, but when he did, he had to make uh, important saves, as is this one on a breakaway. A second period line change led to that. Another big chance there, and Cam able to step up, being, or stopping Troy Terry. A couple of those breakaway chances that Denver was not able to take advantage of to keep the score level. Another good chance here, and once again, Cam able to push the rebound to the corner. Yeah, and again, Cam's a, a very good goaltender. We, we obviously don't want to let him see uh, those great eight chances, but uh, again, he uh, preserved uh, uh, us to have a chance to win this game. Last 30 seconds here, a good save by Cam. Leads to a two-on-one. Brock Besser with the shot, Gillette with the glove save. Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, Gillette made a pre-scouted uh, uh, Brock here a little bit about going top glove. He made a nice save on him. Going into the third again, still scoreless at this point. Just over a minute in, Austin Boganski, a great steal, makes the turnover. Good move on the boards. And Cole Smith, just desire to get to the net and bury this puck to make it 1-0. Yeah, you know what? Uh, good play by, a very good play by Austin, getting the puck and stripping the puck away from their player and uh, accelerating up the ice. And then Cole, uh, Cole Smith does a good job of getting to the net, putting a stick on the ice, presenting a stick, and, uh, and, and can making a, a nice goal there. Second goal of the season for Cole, the freshman from Brainerd, making an impact on the big line. one nothing for you. Going on the power play, though, was Denver came at the step up big to keep it at that score. Yeah, you know, uh, obviously, uh, one nothing lead here, and he had to make a couple saves in the game. And we had another great opportunity there uh, later on in the third period. Yeah. A good chance to extend the lead. The shot does not go from Gardner than a an interference call here at center ice, a tough break for Red. Yeah, it is. It's a tough time of the game to take a penalty, and uh, you know those are times of games where you want to try to stay clean, and uh, they got a power play, and they, uh, they were able to connect off it. Yeah, just 17 seconds into that power play there, you see Henrik Borgstrom beating Cam with the one-timer. That tied it up at one. Just good puck movement here and a nice shot. Yeah, you know, they, uh, they moved the puck rapidly there and made a, made a nice play, and Borgstrom's a great player there. He uh, made a nice uh, goal. No grade eight chances in overtime number one, so it counts officially as a tie. We go to three on three in double OT, and this was this was fun back and forth for the most part yeah. in five minutes. Yeah, you uh, you don't see that regularly, but uh, Ospaganski made a great play uh, to, to break up their two on one, which created a two on one for us going the other way. A great play by Austin, and again, uh, wish we would have capitalized here, but again, we got an opportunity to uh, to score. And Dixon Bowen trying to find Christian Milan and good stop in front. That would lead to this about a minute forty left. Shane Gersich. 
tired legs out there, takes the puck down, and, and this happens, an incredible move to get yeah, the game winning. Highlight real goal, uh, obviously. Uh, and, and one thing that people don't notice is the ice is not very good at the time. You, know, you sure. played uh, played a little lengthy period and a couple overtimes. He made a nice play to keep it on his stick and made a great play of the net. Gersich able to beat Tanner Gillette in one more look. And missed the number two play on SportsCenter this past week. The officially, game officially goes down as a tie, but Gersich's heroics give UND the additional point in the conference standings. UND with the advantage in shots in this one, as well as in the face-off circle, as you outdraw DU 40-24. to Every game I've played against them has been uh, just a battle. and. Uh, you know, real close games, and you know that's what you expect. That was my first three on three since I've been here, and I thought our team did really well, really good job at, at limiting to nothing. I don't even know if they had a shot in the three on three. So, um, you know, I thought we played really well. It's, it's something that we've kind of worked on in practice, and I think that really helped us out today. But yeah, the, the three on three—that's a goalie's nightmare. So I was happy to squeak out of there with the win. Uh, I was pretty tired there, and I knew. Uh, I think it was Butcher. I think he was he was he was pretty tired, and uh, I just tried to you know do a little spin and, and get something on net, and luckily it went in. Me and Brock I always watch uh, Patrick Kane highlights and stuff like that. He always does that, so it was kind of in the back of my mind, and I uh, tried it. Luckily, it worked out. So I was thinking, uh, you know, good win, and uh, you know, I don't know. I kind of blacked out. Well, maybe the purists don't love it, but three on three certainly entertaining. What were your impressions on that final frame and how your guys fared out there? Uh, I thought they did a tremendous job. Uh, you know, obviously going up and down the ice, uh, a lot of energy has expanded early on in the game, and mm -hmm. they had a lot of energy in the, in the overtime. Overtime's great because it's uh, it's a way for the team to decide it rather, rather than a shootout. And obviously that night it proved it. Yeah, Shane there said that he blacked out after he made that yeah. shot. What does it say about a kid like that to try a shot like that at that moment? Well, in the game? confidence. Uh, obviously he's a second year player. He, uh, he, he, confidence in his game and he's playing very confident. Yeah, certainly an exciting way to finish off Friday night's action. We'll get to Saturday's game coming up after the break when we return. Back. We're continuing the conversation of this weekend series with Denver with the head coach Brad Berry. And Brad, your team gets an emotional lift with the goal by Shane Gersich in double overtime. But you got the sense after the game the team still wasn't satisfied. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we left a point on the table there. Uh, you know, had the lead with five minutes left in third period, take a penalty, and they score on their power play. And, you know, that, that's reminiscent of a couple of games that we've had in the, in, in the, few, in the previous uh, few games we've played and uh, something that we got to nail down on. And again, our guys, you know, once you have the game in hand, uh, you know, they're not content until they have it. Yeah, Lou and the, UND looking for more in the second game of this series as they take on Denver. Game two against the Pioneers. Again, you got off to a great start on Friday. You couldn't quite turn all the possession and the chances into a goal. That was not the case, though. Saturday, you get off to a flying start just 33 seconds in. Well, again, it's the same thing as uh, Friday night. Only we scored a goal on, on our first possession here. And, uh, you know, it's something that uh, we're proud of and that we've worked on all week here uh, of trying to get out to an early lead. And, uh, and Shane makes a great play to get a puck to the net. Yeah, Gersh is able to put the puck across the crease, hits off the skate of Matt Marcinu. That made it 1-0 again after just 33 seconds, fifth goal of the season for Gersich. Do you, though, on a power play here after an interference call from Hayden Shaw, they would equalize just five minutes in? Yeah, you know, uh, almost had the kill. We had about what, 15 seconds left in the kill, and, uh, you know, they get the box, so we don't get the box out. He comes to the net, and they get a stick on it. So, again, something that we got to clean up on. Yeah, first goal of the season for Liam Finley on the redirect from Michael Davies. A couple of minutes later, do you keeping the pressure going? Another big save from Cam here on a good look. Yeah, uh, lateral play. Uh, he made a great play to get a cross on, and, uh, you know, he, he was called upon to do that. 9.20 mark, remember that's the go-ahead goal, the defenseman Adam Plant charging after the initial save on Matt Marcinou. What can you do here? Yeah. Well, I think first of all, I think you can hold the line a little bit better and then and then obviously, uh, you know, you have to take the driver to the net and we, and we didn't have coverage there. A couple of chances though for you as this period went on to try and get back. Joel Janet tween and a point blank look in front that Tanner Gillette makes the save on. Yeah, it was a good play. Good play to get it to the front of the net and Joel uh, just didn't quite get it in, but good play. A couple more opportunities here as the period would wind down. Austin Paganski in front, again, unable to quite get enough purchase on the shot. You stay down two to one going into the second, but it would not take you long once the second period got started. Good opportunity for Denver right off the bat, though, and it's Cam Johnson keeping you in it right here. Yeah, you know, it's not the way you want to start the second period. They're uh, giving out the out number there, but uh, I thought we responded right away after. They go on the power play. Tucker Pullman, the shot in front. Gardner with the screen, and Shane Gerst, who else right now there for the putback? Yeah, he's hot right now. He's, like I said, he's playing with confidence, and uh, again, uh, we're back in the game. It's 2-2. 
And let's look at the goal from Shane now. Six on the campaign, the third in just two games of this series. But less than a minute later, Denver would strike back. Henrik Borgstrom, who scored the night before, the big wrister here to beat Cam Top Shelf. Yeah, and again, we gave up the blue line there. And every anytime you give up the blue line to good players like that, there's an opportunity to, to have a shot like that. And uh, again, we didn't close very quickly on them. The Pioneers would keep the pressure up here again, up three to two. A couple of good chances for Denver at the tail end of this period. Cam, the way able to step up and keep it at a one goal game. Yeah, uh, again, called upon too often here in the second period and then, uh, to keep us in this game, but he did and uh, gave us a chance to try to get back in the third here. Going into the third, still trailing three to two. You came out at the start of this period needing a goal and you nearly get one on a couple of occasions. Yeah, and I think we saw a couple highlights earlier in the game where we were right in the doorstep and couldn't jam it away. Tanner Gillette did a great job of stopping the puck there. Tanner Gillette, one of the best in the NCHC in terms of save percentage and goals against. Another good opportunity there. Nearly the same type of goal we saw the night before from Cole Smith and then Johnny Simonson. A good opportunity on a half chance here. Nearly beating Gillette, who was able to knock it down. Yeah, good high shot and uh, again, good transition. This is obviously the best chance in the game here with 5-11 left on the power play. Shane Gersich, who had been so hot, this close to earning the hat trick and tying things up at three. Well, that kind of tells you the story how it's, how it's going now as far as not getting the bounce here and there. But again, you got to keep working through it to try to get it. Yeah, good chances, but no game tying goal would materialize. UND falls for the first time at the Ralph since January. That snaps a 16 game home unbeaten streak. And as you'd imagine, a lot of disappointment in the locker room. But with that, a lot of resolve to bounce back was evident as well. Things didn't go our way. Um, you know, some of the details weren't there for us tonight, and uh, you know, we obviously have to work on that next week in practice. It's frustrating right now. Obviously, um, I think Coach Jackson said it best: "All uh, when things aren't going your way, you need to you need a chip and claw and work as hard as you can. And, and when you think you're working hard, you got to work harder." We had belief we were going to score. Um, we had the chances to do it, and obviously, uh, some games things don't go your way, which which happens to be the case in these, these last couple of weeks for us. But uh, you know, you just have to battle through that and uh, still believe. We need to turn our season around here. Uh, we're back on the road. It's, uh, it's not going to get any easier from, from here on out. So uh, we need to have a great week of practice and be ready to go. Well, both Brad, you and the team have mentioned it's been the little things, some of those details that have just been missing over these last six games. What do you need to do to shore some of those things up? Well, I think, you know, do them on a consistent basis. I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the little details that, that we're getting away from, uh, you know, we have to make sure that we do them consistently time and time again. You know, the biggest thing is when we score a goal, got to make sure that the response is to try to get that next one. And uh, I think sometimes, uh, you know, we let the team off the hook a little bit and they get a goal and they get momentum. It's we got to sustain that momentum by doing the little things constantly over time and time again. Another opportunity opportunity to work on those little things this weekend against St. Cloud. Stick around, we'll preview the matchup against the Huskies when we come back. We've played uh, three great teams these last, pre uh, last three weekends and uh, we're going into one of the hardest places to play in St. Cloud and they're very good on the power play as well so um, you know it's just gonna <laughs> This week's going to be, uh, you know, a gut check and for us, and we're going to have to be focused and prepared, and um, we're going to have to go into St. Cloud ready and willing to uh, win a game. Gage Osmus there helping set the scene for this weekend series against St. Cloud, and Brad, this is now your fifth straight weekend against a ranked opponent. Certainly isn't easy to keep playing these top yep. programs, but you don't get any better playing low-class opposition. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, the whole NCHC is. Uh, uh, built with all top teams in, in, in the conference or in the country, I should say. And uh, again, that's how you get better as a team. I think it's proven time and time again that you keep playing these teams, it makes you a better team, and that's what we uh, that we, we will be at the end of the year. Yeah. St. Cloud's certainly a team that was a tough team to beat last year, especially at home. They're proving that again this season. What do you expect from Bob Mosco's team this weekend? You know, I think they, they play on an Olympic-sized sheet, like it's a wider sheet. Uh, so they build their team that's a smaller, faster team. And again, we're going to have to make sure that we, we defend very well, but obviously uh, try to gain some offensive opportunities because of it too. So uh, again, it'll be a great series and uh, another great rivalry that we we enjoy playing. Looking internally, we've seen some different line combinations over the last couple of weeks. The top unit seems to have stayed pretty consistent. Have you seen some other combinations that you like moving forward? Yeah, well, I thought Cole Smith did a good job coming in and playing uh, with Red Gardner and Austin Pagansky. But I think, you know, going through the week, we'll, we'll try some different things out here and, uh, and experiment with uh, some combinations that might have some good chemistry. Yeah, some things to watch for coming up this weekend. Brad, safe travels. Best yeah. of luck against the Huskies. Thanks, Alex. Brad Berry. Back in a moment to wrap things up here on North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota.
North Dakota will look to get back in the win column this weekend, but the task will be anything but straightforward at the Brooks Center as St. Cloud State hosts a pivotal early season NCHC battle. Friday's game against the Huskies is at 7.30 p.m. with Saturdays at 7. A game we'll have for you live here on Midco Sports Network. St. Cloud, by the way, 6-4 and four on the season. As always, we invite you to relive all the events of the weekend with us next Tuesday night on North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. Until then, I'm Alex Seinert. Thanks for watching.